I'm Sean Bailey. And I'm Ben Affleck. We're the executive producers of Push Nevada. You're about to watch a drama about a massive conspiracy. Jim Prufrock, a government agent, is about to dive headfirst into a mystery. And you can go along for the ride. But unlike any show on television, this ride is for real. In the first scene of the episode you're about to watch, a large amount of money is stolen in Push Nevada. In every episode, there are hints which point to a specific piece of information, a clue. Just watch the show, find the hints, and gather the weekly clues. You need all the clues to solve the puzzle, and you could win the missing money. But you don't have to play the game to love the show. You just have to love a good mystery. So here we go with the first episode of Push Nevada. It's called The Amount. And that's your first hint. You're ready. Let's go. So fast. Show it to me. Yahtzee. Good morning, Grace. Good morning, Mr. Prufrock. How are you today? I'm fine. Any messages? Just one. Your ex-wife on the voicemail. Go ahead and play it. Hi, James. Listen, honey, I didn't get this much check, so I was hoping you could send a little bit right now, maybe $200, $300. Um, you could send to the Twin Palms Motel in Winslow, Arizona. Come on. Thanks, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come You know, I sent the monthly check 10 days ago, UPS. She signed for it herself. Winslow, Arizona. Um, hello. Is this Silas Bodnick? Who the hell is this? I'm sorry, I received a fax. It gave your number. Is, is your name Silas Bodnick? Who is this? My name is Jim Prufrock. I'm an account agent. Forget it. We have accounting in-house. You're not understanding. Somebody specifically sent this fax to my office, so by law I'm required... Throw to... it away. It was a mistake. Well, sir, that brings me to what I'm calling in regards to. It seems there is a sizable accounting Listen, error. I don't care how hard up you are. I don't want your business. Do you hear me? If you ever call here again, I'll, I'll throw a caller ID on you. I'll come to your house. you wish you never called. Get it, Yahoo. Goodbye. End of story. No. Not end of story. Grace, how far away is Push Nevada?
Push Nevada on ABC, brought to you by Sprint. Introducing PCS Vision, clearly a whole new way to look at wireless. And Toyota, get the feeling. The man I spoke with, his name is Bodnick. What's his title at the casino? He's not listed at the casino. He's not listed at the casino? No. Have you ever heard of this place? No, but it must be like most Nevada resorts. Uh-huh. You know, gambling, fun. <laughs> I don't gamble, Grace. Well, why not? You're good with numbers. You could at least break even. No. Nope. Everyone loses in the end. Oh, Mr. Prufrock. I think you could win. Oh, Grace. Uh... My phone's dying. Did you did you remember to put the charger in the uh... Grace? Damn. And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw the light. Valley doesn't get much traffic. Thanks. I appreciate it. That desert will kill a man in four hours. I'm glad you stopped. What do you do? I work for the government. Jim Prufrock. BRB. Honest man, huh? That's right. His name is Job. Hey now, how you doing? This man went and drove his fool self into the desert and got overheated. Is he all right? Sure. Just cold, that's all. I told him you were an honest man. Where's your car? About 30 miles back up the road. Ten bucks for the tow. Once I get it here, I'll see what I can do. Th that'd be fine. Any suggestions on where I might stay tonight?
Good evening. Hello. How can I help you? I just arrived in town, and the mechanic down the street suggested your establishment as a nice place to stay. I see. So do you have any availability? Excuse me? A room that I could pay to stay in? It's not that simple, you see. We're very selective about our clientele. How old are you? 29. Married. Divorced. Employed. Yes, ma'am. By whom? Good soup, by the way. Um, I'm employed... Why don't I show you to your room? It's $25 a night. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. Your room is in the east wing. You can look across this garden into the west wing. Now, these rooms are specially designed for your enjoyment. The north wing, however, is completely, totally off limits. Okay? Do you understand? I understand. Good. Here we are. Yeah. This will be fine. Have a good night. Can I get you something? Um, yeah. Do you have any non-alcoholic beer? Right away. What's your name? Excuse me? A name. Do you have one? My name is Jim. Hello, Jim. I'm Mary. I'm pleased to meet you. I haven't seen you before, have I? No, I uh, just arrived in town today. What did you arrive in town to do? Some work. Is that the only thing you want to do while you're in town, Jim? Well, I haven't seen that much of the town, so I don't know what else it has to offer. I didn't mean it that way. I see. So, since I'm new in town, could you tell me a little bit about this place? It's called Slowman's. It's a slow dance bar. People come here to dance and have conversation. How much does a dance cost? Depends on what kind of dance you want. One pays anywhere from two to twenty dollars, depending on the dance and conversation. I see. No. No. What are you looking for in this town, Jim? I'm looking for a man named Silas Bodnick. 
Do you know him? No, I don't. That's a drinking person inside of me. Hey, singing. <laughs> Do you mind if I give you some advice, Jim? Go right ahead. If you're going to stay here and push Nevada, take your time. Take careful steps. Why do you say that? Because there's a secret, Jim. And like all the best secrets, it's not quickly told. So, can I have this dance? said slow careful steps you move too fast for me Bonjour. Can I help you, sir, monsieur? Yes, sir. I'm here on official business. I'm looking for an accountant who works here. His name is Silas Bodnick. Well, monsieur Prufrock, you are more than welcome to speak with our accounting department. I'm sure they'll comply with your every wish. He scored! <sighs> Which one is Silas Bodnick? All right, boys, what do you got? Same on the paperwork. Sign right here. What's your name? That's it. Yeah, it's Bodnick. What the hell is your problem? Check that was paying you good American money, so I don't want to hear any of your excuses. Now, hold on. Ginger, uh, did you log those faxes like we talked about? Yes, Mr. Bodnick. And you're uh, double-checking the number before you press send? Yes, Mr. Bodnick. And like I said, I sent no faxes this past Tuesday, so you must have sent the one that you got so upset about yourself. I don't think so, Ginger. I want you to check the log on that thing. If you didn't send it, who did? No. It's business as usual. Oh, uh, one very important thing. <laughs> Sir, this is a restricted area. I spoke with Mr. Bodnick a few days ago. He should be expecting me. Yeah, I'm afraid not, sir. Who the hell are you? You sent me a fax this past Tuesday. I sent hundreds of faxes a day. It contained a consequential accounting error. I already told you, I don't need a freaking accountant. My name is Jim Prufrock. I work for the Internal Revenue Service. Hmm. So, uh... This fax I supposedly sent, if I sent it, uh, I sent it to the IRS. That's right. Genius. That's right. Well, <laughs> look, I'm not going to tell you anything, so uh, why don't you begin conducting whatever investigation it is you think you should conduct, and I'll get cracking on my end to figure out what story we're going to go with. I know you're crooked, Mr. Bodnick. 
I knew it the moment I first heard your voice. With the money that's evaporated from those accounting statements, I bet you have it and you've cooked the books here to hide it, and it's not the first time you've done it either. But strangely, that's not what concerns me now. What concerns me now is the fact that this establishment, the Versailles, generates the kind of revenue that this kind of money could disappear and no one notices and or cares. That's what concerns me now. I'm not threatening you. I'm really not. I'm giving you advice. Now, if you don't take it, um, I promise you that you're going to look back on this conversation. You're going to understand that I was trying to help you, and you're going to wish to high heaven you had. Threat? I'm an agent of the federal government. You just committed a federal offense. You're an IRS scrub. You wash my floors. The people who I work for, who I have the, the stones to... These are the people who own the people who own your father. You're nobody to me. You're nothing. Why don't you be a good little girl and go garnish some teacher's wages who forgot to itemize her Schedule A deductions? Go ruin an honest man's life. It's all you people are good for. You know what, Mr. Bodnick? I am not in the most popular line of work. And usually I don't stoop to defend my vocation to liars, forgers, and cheats, but I am willing to today so that you understand just how serious I am. You know how this country works, how it runs, money. That's how teachers get paid, streets get paved. Do you know why taxes are higher than they should be? Why they are a burden to honest people, do you? Fraud. You. You, sir, are the reason decent people shoulder the albatross of an inequitable tax burden. Wealthy, greedy cheats and thieves. I can plainly see you are one of those. And it is for the benefit of those good, honest people. Not to be thought well of by wretched crooks that I chose to pursue this occupation. Moreover, it is why I now intend to make quite certain you see the inside of a federal prison soon. And should you attempt to elude me, Mr. Bodnick, you will quickly find that my tenacity is infinite, my patience everlasting. You will never escape me. However, if you should decide to consider for the first time the social contract under which this country operates and tell me what I need to know, I'll take your newfound citizenship into account when I decide your fate. <clears throat> Here's where you can find me. You pathetic bastard. You're not even a cop. You can't even cuff me. You want to know where you can find me? In South America, in a pool. Me and your wife. Yeah. Me and your wife and Consuelo, the pool boy. Just in case he wants to have a shot at her. Good afternoon, Grace. It's Jim. How are you? Fine. Good. Can you connect me to Ira, please? Sure. Thanks. He's calling his supervisor. Record the call. Notify Waller. On it. Looks like Bodnick's dialing out also. Check it out. Look, I, I don't know if you're the Shuckers animal or not, but this guy's got real info. 
Hey, he got the facts from somewhere. Somebody's leaking. The IRS guy's getting connected. Like a damn Bonding monkey. bores me. Go back to the Fed. Ira. Hi, it's Jim. Thanks for taking the time. Look, I, I wanted to talk to you about this Push Nevada case I've been looking into. Uh, the long and short of it is, I think there's something big happening here. I don't know what it is yet, but I think we're going to need a lot more than me. I think we're going to need a lot more than the IRS. See, my investigation began two days ago when I received a fax. So I leave the Versailles and go to the library to do some research on the town's history. I get to the microfiche, and it's spotty at best. Weeks and months are missing at a time. But one thing becomes very clear. In mid-1983, Push Nevada was on the verge of financial collapse. Debt stripped down the whole thing. In June 1984, this LLC, Watermark Consolidated, comes in, buys the Versailles Casino. Overpaying, if you want my opinion. At any rate, Within the next six months, a new police chief is elected, and the, the Versailles pays out a dozen seven-figure payouts in the first three months. And then, around 85, the town turns around. Its per capita income moves from $12,426 per household in 1983 to $44,440 in 1985. New businesses come in, housing starts go up 300%, crime plummets, the whole thing turns around. Late 1985, no more data. So then I have Grace contact the State Gaming Commission. They tell her that all files on Watermark LLC and the Versailles Casino are closed on direct order from the Attorney General. Strangest thing I have ever seen in my entire career. See, I think we need to dig into this, Ira. Dig into it deep. Ira, what do you think? Uh, I don't know, Jim. Doesn't sound like a big deal to me. Why don't you head back home tonight, and, and we'll see you in the office tomorrow. <laughs> we'll grab an Arby's or something. All righty, then. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow. So what's going to happen now? No, nothing bad, right? I thought you might need somebody to do your taxes for you. Oh, you're an accountant. I'm an investigative agent for the Internal Revenue Service. You caught me. I haven't reported a cash transaction since 1996. Oh, and Jimmy, I only work for cash, or sometimes a muffler, or dinner. I'm in the friends business. Everybody needs a friend. I could use a friend right now. A friend or a dance? Is both too much to ask? What can you do for me? Well, I can tell you that, generally speaking, and this is legally permissible for me to say, though very frowned upon, it's only worth it for the IRS to prosecute if the underreported amount is more than 35% of the total income. 
So if you want to under-report, you can do so comfortably, up to 35%. I just told you how to cheat on your taxes. I'll give you a dance, Jimmy. If you promise to do one thing for me. What would you like me to do? Go home. Go home, Jimmy. You seem like a nice guy. But I don't think you're cut out for push. So just turn around, pack your things, zip up your matching suitcases, and go back to your life. Or your wife, or whatever. Don't go looking for things you can't find. Stare at mountains you can't climb. It'll only make you miserable. And that's no way to live. Trust me. Place a long walk uphill. Drop the rocks. Go home, Jimmy. Nick, speak, Captain Abib. First message. Mr. Bodnick, I'm calling to remind you that for you to be considered a cooperating witness, I will need to hear from you by 7 p.m. You will know that it is 7 p.m. because that will be exactly 11 and a half minutes after the sun goes down. Just so there's no confusion. I know you. By name and by title. Mister, now I hear the voice. It's good to finally meet you. Mister, uh, from Watermark. Sit down, Mr. Wagner. Mr. Bodnick, it is your responsibility to manage and care for the day-to-day -day affairs of this casino. Well, I do manage it, yes. It wasn't a question. I'm just stating a fact. Yes. Under the auspices of the agreement you made with our company, who was your employer, and the chief shareholder in this casino, you were to be responsible for the accounting, the bookkeeping, and the general fiduciary management of this casino. Correct? Now, that was a question, Mr. Bodnick. Yes, yes. Excellent. I'm in the right place. It follows to reason that the issues regarding the appropriation and or misappropriation of funds. That would fall under the purview of your department. Uh, Not a question, Mr. Barton. Okay. There is a substantial amount of money missing from my safe. They're not accounted for in your books. Your books, however, very poorly doctored. They seem so obviously to be masking a keystone criminal undertaking here. But upon even the most cursory examination of laundering, it'd be readily apparent to anyone with a GED and an abacus. Yeah, I, I noticed that when we have our own investigation. Save it, Mr. Bond. The stolen money is of no importance. It's minor, almost infinitesimal, relative to our, our larger holdings. Though sadly, see, you've managed to put those at risk as well, and that, that, that is of paramount, paramount importance. You see, Mr. Bartlett, Watermark, LLC, its subsidiaries and affiliates, they've always maintained a very close, though somewhat tenuous, relationship with the IRS. This relationship, this delicately balanced, requires almost a, a constant massage. 
Do you believe you're qualified to handle that relationship? No. <laughs> Correct. Well, therefore, since you've engaged in behavior, which has caused the parent company now to suffer significant exposure, significant risk, I think it's fair the parent company ask you. You remedy this situation now yourself. Now, the problem, Mr. Bodnick, is that IRS investigator. Now, please, take steps to rectify the situation. You rectify it in a quiet, dignified fashion, nothing bush league, nothing incendiary, but you rectify that immediately. Do you understand? Yes. Excellent. You have this dealt with by 7 o'clock. If it is not dealt with, you will see me again. It'll not be so nearly as cordial a conversation. concierge at Nutjob Hotel. He's not just playing games. What about the money? The money? I don't worry about the money. It's in the safe in my house. And we're done. And I'm out of here tonight. I just have to clean up one thing and that's it. Audio intercept off. Improve act. I want to talk. When? Now, my place. I'm not interested unless you want to make it worth the trip out there. I'll give you what you want. I'll give you more. Get over here, Tuffy. I'll make you employee in a month. How do I get there? If you're any good, you already know. Didn't I? I gave you a whack at it. You called and asked me up here. And do you have something to tell me, or do I have a report to file and charges to press? Yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got something to tell you. I want you to tell me something first. There are three birds on a wire. One of them decides to flap his wings and fly away. How many birds are there? Two. Nope. I knew it. There's three. Just because somebody decided to do something doesn't mean they done it. See, that's me. But now I'm going to fly. I'm going to fly away, baby. <laughs> hey, uh, don't suppose I can interest you in a little tutor. If there are narcotics in that, I will include that in my report and refer the case to the appropriate local authorities. OK. Is that... It's not for everybody. You're wasting my time, Mr. Bodnick. Hey, hey! Do you notice anything unusual about this place? It's hotter than it looks. You look outside, it looks normal. It looks nice, it looks like Palm Springs. But it's hotter than it looks. This heat could kill a man in four hours. So I've been told. Hotter than it looks. And you still didn't go home. I'll see you in court, Mr. Bodnick. No, no, no! 
you're a puppy. I'm like all bad dogs, I'm gonna have to put you down. I'm gonna have to put you down for real. Push Nevada, two hour sizzler. Thursday heats up with a two hour sizzler. I like it that way. Welcome to Push Nevada. I witnessed a murder last night. Romance, mystery, murder. This place has got it all. There are a lot of bad people doing bad things. From Ben Affleck and Sean Bailey, Push Nevada. Thursday, 8, 7 central on ABC. Parental and viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> well, listen, we all just saw Push Nevada. And, uh, wow, I got a lot to talk to you about this one. B incidentally, beautifully shot. I Thanks mean, a totally lot. Visually uh, stunning. Yeah, we wanted to do something that was kind of um, unusual for TV and interesting and different and that had a, a sort of closed-end uh, mystery component as well as this game component. And we, we benefited from getting some really talented people to work on the show and mm -hmm. direct the episodes. And, uh, yeah, you just watched it, and I hope you like it. And the next... This episode will repeat on Thursday at right. 8 on uh -huh. ABC. And then you'll be able to see the second episode at 9, immediately following. So if you missed it just now and you just right. tuned in because you heard about the Regis and the Kelly. At night, yeah. Um, yeah, at yeah. night, which is, that's, that's a fancy version of the show. <laughs> uh, then you can see it uh, again on Thursday uh, at 8 and then the new episode at 9. Good idea. So now yeah. if you watch all the clues, Kelly, you understand there's a million dollar payoff if you can solve this mystery. Is that right? There is, there is. We learned from uh, the nighttime shows, they work better if you give away money. Uh, you, know, you know, I did that for a year and a half, and I'm out of work. <laughs> ben, can't you just give us a hint where the million dollars <laughs> yeah. might be? Let's cut to the chase. <laughs> really? Actually, it's funny because, like, our offices and everything, once we announced this contest, 
All of our computers got crashed. People hacked into the voicemail. People okay. hacked into the computers. Yeah. I didn't realize that when you're giving away, you know, a million bucks, yeah. all of a sudden, you know, all these people come. So we have to sign security stuff. And so it's a new experience for me. Yeah, and you know, it's you know that million dollars is under his mattress <laughs> in his <laughs> home somewhere. Listen, we have. A I got it right here. <laughs> we have a clip here, and, and there's a, a character in this uh, mm -hmm. show called Mary, who's played by uh, Scarlett uh, Shorvat. Shorvat, yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen her before, Ben, but she looks like a very interesting lady. Sure, she's great. She's yeah. really good in the show, and so is Derek Cecil, who's, who's the lead. They're both the terrific. The IRS agent, yeah. Yes, we have a protagonist, the lead, who's, who works for the IRS, so we're already trying to get the audience's sympathy is already an uphill climb for us. <laughs> the That's right. And I love John Polito. He's a New York actor who I saw off-Broadway years ago in Other People's Money. He's a terrific actor. He's fantastic. Yeah. He does a lot of stuff with the Coen brothers, and he's great yeah. in this, this episode. Well, here's how the whole thing begins. He gets to this little town, Push, Nevada, meets this lady, and this is what she tells him. Do you mind if I give you some advice, Jim? Go right ahead. If you're going to stay here in Push, Nevada, Take your time. Take careful steps. Why do you say that? Because there's a secret, Jim. And like all the best secrets, it's not quickly told. There you go. That's that how tail. it begins. <laughs> well, I, I like got that broad. <laughs> I got it all figured out. She's the one who's got the money. <laughs> Hey, Ben, we thank you so much for taking the time tonight to be with us. We appreciate it very, very much. Thanks for having me. It's really nice, particularly over the satellite. I feel like I'm uh, talking to NASA. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, thank we look you. forward to seeing Push Nevada Thursday night, right? Watch. It's regular time slot will be Thursday at 9, yeah. Ben, thank you very <laughs> thank much. You, and good night Thanks to you so down there in Philadelphia. Bye. Thanks, Benny. Stay with us now. Coming up next, Broadway song and dance man, Matthew Broderick. We'll be back.